Welcome to Let's Talk Tech with NVTC, a digital series exploring tech's most notable trends, new innovations, digital transformations, lean agile principles and mindsets, the future of work and more. We'll introduce next gen leaders from member companies of the Northern Virginia Technology Council and learn about the great impact they are making in our region. I'm your host, Philip Nathrop. Welcome to Let's Talk Tech with NVTC. Today's episode will feature iHeartMedia's Regional Senior Vice President of Sales, Danny Bortnick, and Chief Integrated Marketing Director, Cliff Chyatt. And as always, we'll have our Did You Know segment at the end. Before we begin, I'd like to take a moment to thank our sponsors, Accenture and Uninet, and our media partner, iHeartMedia. You can find all of our episodes on the iHeartMedia podcast app. Now, I'm excited to introduce today's speakers, Danny Bortnick, and Cliff Chaya. Well, Cliff, Danny, welcome to Let's Talk Tech with NBTC. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you, Phil. I'm excited to talk to you guys. Uh, you know, it's funny. I, I Heart Media is one of those names that I've just known for a while. Uh, I'm what? I'm, I'll be 39 this year, but I remember being a teenager and hearing about I Heart Media when it was first coming about. And the first thing I remember was Jingle Ball. And I, I wanted to go so bad, but I never got a chance to go. Jingle Ball was just one of those things that I knew some friends that went and they were having a great time. And in my mind, uh, you know, I always thought of iHeartMedia as a radio company because of that. But today in this discussion, we're going to learn about all the cool things that you guys do and so much more. Yeah, I'm excited to talk to you guys about that. Cliff, you're actually, are you in the D.C. area? Are you up around Jersey? Well, no, I'm, I work out of the D.C. market and uh, have uh, spent my whole ado- adult life there. Um, but, you know, I don't know, uh, Phil, I thought you were kind of fishing for some Jingle Ball tickets there. And, uh, you know, if, we'll... <laughs> if you got some, <laughs> depending on how the how, how uh, conversation goes. Um, but listen, I'm, I'm just like you. Uh, I the reason I got into this company is because um, and this is a true story. Uh, I, I was getting out of the, the print newspaper business about uh, eight years ago, nine years ago. And I was thinking about what's the next step in my career. And I was actually on the side of the road trying to win a key on the radio that may or may not open a Mini Cooper, you know? And here I am as a grown man texting on the side of the road, listening to Hot 99.5, trying to like, will they pick my name? And as I'm doing that, it hits me like, if I'm doing this, how many other people are engaging you know, with radio. And so I decided to change my search to, to media. And I was fortunate to land at iHeartMedia um, and never look back. But uh, it's, it's funny. Um, it, that's what it's all about. It's really all about how do you engage audiences and keep them coming back. And, uh, and that's something we've always done. But we're, we're no more of a radio company now than, than Apple is just a computer company. So uh, we have completely become a data-driven, multi-platform company uh, that just with our radio assets, we're reaching uh, 90% of adults in the country, throughout the country. Uh, and it's just fascinating when you think about that, but not only are we reaching them, they're spending more time with radio than they're spending with any other uh, media uh, during the day. Even our reach is bigger than Google, Facebook, any TV network. So it, it's crazy when people learn about that. But like to your point, a lot of people don't know what's under the hood. And uh, that's what we're hoping to do today is to kind of share a little bit more about what we what we do have uh, at our disposal and how we're helping companies, especially these times uh, when it comes down to uh, talent acquisition. Yeah, I remember Hot 99.5, Sarah Fraser. She needed me to be the 95th caller. And I was, I guess I was always like 94. <laughs> 96 or something crazy. Um, but I think that memory right there, like what you just did, it's that companionship. It's that one-to-one relationship with our talent and our brands. And there is an emotional connection to the audio industry, to the radio industry and to iHeart. And people are very emotional about who they listen to, who they interact with. And it's just a very unique medium. Like we'll all go home tonight and watch the news on TV, which is great. But when you're listening to that favorite host of yours on the way to work in the morning, it's just different. It's a very captive audience and it's really special. And it all comes down to companionship. Yeah. Well, Danny, were you on the side of the road uh, trying to figure life out when you realized you wanted to be a part of iHeartMedia also? Uh, Well, sort of. I was at CBS uh, for a decade, actually, both in New York and the D.C. area. And I came over to iHeart four years ago. 
So I run sales for DC and Baltimore, but I also run talent acquisition and recruitment for the enterprise. And I started doing this back in January and it's been an amazing ride. Obviously the recruitment vertical is one of the hottest verticals right now in advertising in general, because we're doing two things. We're helping people uh, increase their pipeline of people and their, their flow of people because everyone has attrition. And we're also helping companies create true recruitment marketing brands. So when you say the name of a company, there is an emotional connection. When I say a company name to you, it's like, oh, I think I know what it's actually like to work at that company. And that doesn't just happen without a strategy behind it. And that's my, I would call that my side hustle, which has become recruitment for iHeartMedia on top of my day job, which is advertising sales and operations for the DC and Baltimore markets. So Cliff, when you first joined, did you see that this would be your role here at iHeartMedia when you were thinking, you know, this is the, this is the area I want to go into? Well, you know, I like to think that anybody in life likes to be at a place at the right time. And um, I really felt fortunate that, that I joined the company at a time when, um, when we had first launched the iHeartRadio app. And, in, and what intrigued me about that um, was the fact that we were really thinking about where the ball is going to be thrown with audio way back then. And, um, and we grew to 50 million registered users faster than Twitter. I mean, it was phenomenal, but we cheat a little bit because we have 850 radio stations promoting the heck out of it, right? Um, but what's amazing about it is it got us into the data world. And by getting us into the data world, um, as technology continued to grow, it was amazing how um, the devices that people would consume audio on. So, uh, you know, the fact that I got to see smart speakers, you know, happen, I'm not going to say her name because it will go on in my room right now, but uh, let's just say, you know, especially like during the pandemic where, you know, maybe people weren't in their cars as much every, we just saw this huge spike of people consuming us um, from their smart speakers, from their smart TVs, from the game consoles. So the technology uh, has continued to change. There's like 250 devices and platforms now uh, that people can consume audio. So we don't even refer to it really as much as radio, as much as the power of audio and the power of listening and engaging people. So to me, I got to witness all that in my time here and uh, it's just continuing to grow. And obviously that got us into the podcast space because podcasts, you know, it, it, it was a game changer. Uh, and, uh, you know, the fact that you can uh, reach people uh, in their favorite podcasts with messaging is just incredible. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad you guys did. I mean, I have a podcast. We talked about that earlier, DC local leaders, where I interview military government and technology leaders from around our beltway. And it's on the iHeartMedia app. And I get to see the people that engage with it and download it and, and that data. And, you know, it's especially in the pandemic, when people weren't in their cars listening to traditional radio, they were still engaging with that media that you guys provide. And, you know, Danny, that that data, I think that's probably one of the, the key things that you are able to utilize with what you're doing for iHeartMedia. I'd love to hear how, how you take that data and what you do with it to help companies actually find the right people. Yeah, so five or six years ago about that, you know, if you did a broadcasting campaign or you utilized our traffic network, well, it would work. It always has worked, but you wouldn't have a dashboard. There would no be peace of mind where you'd be able to optimize an audio, a broadcast campaign, no different than everyone is used to optimizing in the digital world. So what we've been able to do is we allow clients on a dashboard to optimize which stations are working best for them, which day parts are working best for them, meaning morning drive or afternoon drive, and even which creative is working best. In the recruitment world, sometimes you need multiple pieces of creative. Maybe there are different jobs available. Maybe there are different things the company wants to spotlight from culture to a great 401k to benefits to upward mobility. Sometimes you need multiple pieces of creative to really tell the full story of a corporation when it comes to recruitment marketing. And we can actually use a dashboard to say which creative is resonating most with the listeners and, and the people that are engaging with our brands, both terrestrial audio and digital audio. So what's it look like when I engage you, when I call you, you know, take me through that process and what do you have a series of questions that I, as the, the business owner need to understand before engaging you so that I can best help you help me? Yeah, so it's been interesting rolling out recruitment at the company. So our sales staff, the people like Cliff, all of our leaders, we're really good at marketing CNAs. It's what we do every day. But what we learned is recruitment CNAs are really different. When we're doing a recruitment CNA, some of the questions we need to know are types of jobs available. 
number of positions available. What geographies are those positions in? What does your company want to be known for? What is the reason I would want to work for your company? Because in the employment space right now, we have a lot of options. So what is that hook on why I would want to engage with you? When I'm speaking to an HR or talent acquisition director, what's your attrition rate. Normally we talk about that in advertising, our advertisers that don't come back, but what's your attrition rate with people? Because if you have a high attrition rate with personnel, you need a constant recruitment marketing strategy. If you have low turnover, fantastic, great work. It's, it's amazing that your employees are staying with you. You will be using us more on an urgent needs basis when it comes to talent. So those are just a, a, a few of the questions we asked to really drill down on. How can we help you? What does a project look like? How do we test? How do we learn from it? How do we grow from it? And behind all of that is data, attribution, and various dashboards to help guide us along the way. Yeah, you just used the the one word that I think we're all used to when we think of media attribution. And I bet Cliff, you know, when you were in print media, you know, that was one of the things that most people would look at. If we do this op-ed, if we put this, you know, advertisement in this magazine, what do we how do we measure what we get back from it? Right. You can only improve what you can measure. You know, how do you do that now with what you guys are doing? Well, what's amazing, the old rule of thumb was 50% of my marketing is working. I just don't know which half. And uh, what's amazing about that is that people um, had kind of like this, I think it's working. I don't know for sure. But um, since I've been on board, I have seen amazing, to Danny's point, just amazing changes in the ability to do use analytics and data. Uh, in fact, a lot of people who are in the STEM world uh, who would normally go into engineering for careers are now going into marketing because of the fact that, you know, analytics, data, all that stuff matters more than ever. So it's, it's, it used to be if you went into marketing, it's because you had a creative side of your brain. But now it's like, you know, a lot of people who just are great with math and numbers and, and all that, it's like a heaven for them, you know, to get into marketing. Uh, but to answer your question, uh, we do have dashboards, as Danny mentioned, but um, with radio, the fact that we can actually match up uh, Google Analytics uh, to times that airs, uh, ads were air, to be able to um, do a correlation between spikes in web traffic during certain windows of time. So what we do is we measure within a 10 minute window of a spot airing and we can see um, lift, you know, to their web activity. Uh, and it's, again, it's very conservative, but also to Danny's point, it allows us to optimize uh, success by seeing, you know, which creatives pulling better, uh, which times of day, which days of week, uh, what length spot. So all those things really fall into place. So it allows us to pivot in real time on an ad campaign, you know, long as you don't do it as a knee jerk, but, you know, you really look at the data and say, okay, make some intelligent decisions. But um, the fact that we can do that, um, what it does for HR directors is it, it allows them to say the investment that we're making is moving the needle for us. And they couldn't do that before we were able to start doing things like that. Yeah. Well, Danny, let's say, let's say I just uh, entered a new market that I was never in before, um, the Austin market, and got a new client. I need to hire 150 new employees, and I engaged you and wanted you to help me figure out. And, and I know that the, I know four or five specific job functions that I need to hire for, and I have a general age range of the type of folks that I'm looking for based on the level of that job. I'm assuming they're in that certain age range. That's not, um, I'm not uh, discriminating against any kind of ages in my company. What would you do? Like, how would you help me satisfy this? And how can I work with you? What products, what would you tell me that I need to do? And, and where do you need me to be to do that? Yep. So at iHeart, uh, we've taken the marketing funnel and we've aligned it with all types of jobs and tactics and strategies aligned with that. So what we see is, is on lower entry level positions where usually there's higher volume of those jobs, people need lots of those jobs. We use upper funnel tactics. So we're gonna use broadcast. We're gonna use our influencers. We're gonna use our TTWN, which is our traffic news and information network. We're gonna use OTT video and we're gonna use digital audio and we're probably gonna use email marketing. All of those things I just mentioned in a new market like Austin, great market, uh, is we're gonna cast a really wide net to get resumes flowing. 
period. And the reason we're going to use those tactics is because there's not a lot of prerequisites to those lower level positions. Any one of us could do one of those type of jobs right now if we wanted to make that pivot in our career. Now, as we get more sophisticated, as we need engineers, or if it was a doctor, I'm just making it up, but sophisticated positions, accountants, where you need a CPA, these positions are going to be more lower funnel marketing. That's going to be programmatic display. That's going to be digital audio, but super targeted. That's going to use our TTW and traffic network, but maybe we're going to be a little more segmented and focus on news talk stations due to the type of qualitative that goes in line with a news talk product. So we're going to get surgical and we're going to use the marketing funnel and we're going to align tactics and strategies based on the type of jobs and different jobs need different tactics and number of positions open will also dictate the type of assets and tactics we use. So, and how do you help the both the HR departments and the marketing departments within an organization overcome that idea of, you know, they may have a need to ask you which one of those tactics are the best and that's how they want to focus. Uh, but, you know, it, Coca-Cola is still spending billions of dollars on billboards right now. Uh, and we've got every digital product under the sun, but they're still putting that up there. So, you know, they, they figured something out. What, how would you help them overcome that idea of, you know, instead of thinking of which one is the most important, the fact that when you do it all, it works. Yep. So we would start with case studies. We would start with what we've seen because we're so large and because I have the optics of like a 40,000 foot view. I'll talk about what's worked for companies like theirs, jobs like theirs, number of openings like theirs in those geographies. But it's, it's also going to come down to education. So usually these conversations start on talent acquisition side. And usually we have to really educate a little on why recruitment marketing is important. I will say that conversation is getting a lot easier now because of what's going on in the employment world. So it's getting easier. But then once we've educated them, we've gotten the lay of the land on their pain points, what they need right now, then marketing usually gets looped in. So it really does become a collaborative conversation, but it does start on the HR side. It does start with case studies and it does start with things we've seen at iHeart across the country work for companies like that with that number of positions open in those type of geographies because all markets are very different. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's, uh, I mean, it sounds like you guys got it. Uh, you see, I love that word surgical that you use. You've got it down to a precision. I just wanted to piggyback on what Danny said. And, you know, we have learned that 80% of the job seekers out there right now are passive. What does that mean? That means that, you know what? I'm not looking for a job. I'm not going to job boards. I'm gainfully employed. But you know what? If the right opportunity came along, yeah, I'd be open to a conversation. So that's where, when you talk about which tactic to use, you got to fill the funnel. You know, you got to build a recruitment brand. And when that recruitment brand is built, uh, and I had a real scenario uh, in, um, you know, in Austin, you know, where, where they, uh, to Danny's point, that they're doing traffic and weather, uh, sponsoring the weather center, traffic weather center, because they know there's a lot of traffic and weather there and they want to build the brand so that, you know, everything else they're doing works. So that was a perfect opportunity for them to start there and then follow it up with all the uh, digital, you know, tactics that we can offer. Um, but I really think um, the pain point has been that, you know, people really don't know what we're about. They don't know our story. They don't know what we do in the community. You know, we got to start marketing our company like it's the best new improved toothpaste. And they have to think about it as consumer marketing. And that's why so many people are, are coming to us for advice because they realize the old ways aren't working anymore. Uh, and, uh, you know, I just thought I'd add that because I think that, that that's, that's the magic sauce there. Well, yeah, no, I appreciate you bringing that up because it is when you do everything, it's, it's, and you said it's like consumer marketing. And I think that's true. I, even you mentioned the email marketing, I get tons of newsletters and thing and, and all kinds of email marketing. And I think in the past I may have unsubscribed to a few, but now I keep them as a resource. I search my inbox. If I scan through it and it registers something with me, uh, you know, I might be passively thinking about that new product or that new whatever that I need to use. And I keep it in that inbox because I know I can search it and go get it. And I don't know if that makes me a weirdo or if that means that, you know, people are hanging on to things. And, yeah, it, me it means the targeting for you is probably right. <laughs> it means you got the right email marketing. <laughs> yeah, I know I need it. I just don't need it right now. So I don't want to get rid of it. And I'm sure they'll tell me something cool later. So I don't get rid of that, that you know, means of information for me. 
Hey, Phil, uh, Phil, I wanted to share real quick uh, uh, old school observation. And Danny always makes fun of me when I bring up old school. But my mother used to open up direct mail over a trash can when I was little. And she started throwing it away without opening it. And I go, Mom, why, why are you throwing? Like, what a waste. Why You're not even reading it. She goes, I never heard of them. And to me, nothing's changed. When you're getting an email and you never heard of them, you now don't throw it away in the trash, you, you electronically delete it, right? So that's why they work hand in hand. You gotta build that name. You gotta build that reason why should I open that email? What is that, why, why does that resonate with me in a positive way? And that's why going back to why this all works together uh, hasn't changed. It's just that the technology has changed, but the human behavior hasn't. It's not. And to go off of Cliff's mother's example, the more modern example would be Instagram. We are hit with Instagram ads every day. Right now we're being hit with ads. The ones I've never heard of, I don't engage with. The ones I've seen somewhere or heard about anywhere, I engage with. They're very customized. They know Danny Bordnick better than anyone. They're unbelievable ads, but I don't engage with the ones that, I've, that I have no familiarity with. And that is what audio does to complement any company's digital efforts, either on the marketing side or of course on the talent acquisition side. Yeah, I mean, you guys are taking a very sales approach. I mean, I'm a seasoned sales guy and, and that's you know the career I had prior to what I'm doing now. And I just, we, we, it gets instilled in you. It takes eight or nine touches before you even have the first conversation. And you've kind of have to be all over the place and everywhere and have those multiple conversations so that when they have a need that aligns with what you provide, you at least have the opportunity for that conversation. It doesn't mean you're gonna get a sale, but they'll never actually have that conversation with you if you're a stranger from nowhere and you just walk up to them, right? So you start providing those, that information that you hope that they need that's around the topic that you discuss. And if companies are taking that same approach where they're you know, here's the cool things that our company does. And you're just constantly rolling that out. That person who's looking for a job, you know, the job is just one thing. That's just a skill they have. They're looking, it sounds like nowadays, from what I hear, they're looking for a lot more in a company uh, than just the paycheck. What have you guys found in your data and how do you tackle that? I'm, you know, Danny, this might be a you question, you know, Cliff, this might be a you question, but you know, what are you recommending that people talk about in these ads? Is it, hey, we do zero trust and we do cool cyber stuff? I, I mean, I'm assuming you do. It's in your name. I hope you do. Yeah. So I'll start and Cliff, I'll throw it to you. It's across, it runs across the board, but the most important things are culture, upward mobility, benefits, how it helps you take care of your family. Um, I would say in the more urgent needs, a lot of signing bonuses are going on. People are getting really aggressive to get people in. But I would say anything that ties to emotion, to that person, to their life, on what it means to work at that company, that's what we're seeing on top of the fact that companies have started spotlighting tenured employees, new employees, to give a real world perspective of what it's actually like to work there. And that is the power of audio, being able to tell stories and storytelling is really powerful in that one-to-one -one companionship that we talked about earlier. Yeah, I, th I think to piggyback on that, I would just say uh, purpose. Um, the workforce now of today, people wanna feel like they're gonna be in an environment that they could provide their full potential and not be squelched, you know? And a lot of companies will not give, you know, give you a voice. They won't give you an opportunity to really do what, you know, your talent is. And I think the more that a company can emphasize that, that you're getting into a company that's gonna let you be you, uh, whether that's through, uh, you know, diversity and inclusion, uh, or that you really are gonna be able to uh, make a difference here um, and be able to contribute to the company's future. I think those are the things that really check a lot of boxes for people today. And I think the more that companies can emphasize that, um, and, you know, we spend how much of our time, you know, working at the company. I mean, this is a big part of our lives. So that's why, you know, I'm where I am because I just, a Danny lets me be me, <laughs> uh, but, you know, but I feel like I'm part of, I'm part of the success, you know, of building something exciting. Yeah, I think more and more people need, you know, this feeling of purpose uh, is, you know, it's not necessarily, I don't think it's a war on talent. I think it's a war on purpose, right? If you, what's your mission? What's the company's mission as a whole? We know that you're a computer company or you're an accounting firm or whatever, but 
you know, what are you really trying to accomplish? What's your, what's the higher goal here? And I think people are more and more aligning towards that in their own personal life, which is a lot of what I talk to people about on the show, right? These, these C-suite leaders and why they are where they are. But I think even the younger folks, they're coming out of school and, and they're aligning with that early, which I think ultimately is a good thing. Um, sounds like you're helping companies kind of align that message with, um, with what they're looking for as far as talent. So, you know, sounds like you're off to a great start and doing some awesome stuff. I, uh, if you do, I do want to take you up on those tickets. If you were making an offer to me, Cliff, that um, you can get me some tickets or, you know, what else, what other concerts you guys got going on? Listen, um, at the end of the day, we have guitars hanging all over our office. We have pictures of all of our, you know, music festivals. We don't take ourselves too seriously. You know, we have fun. And that's another part of the culture, you know, that we really enjoy it. And music is one of those common denominators. You know, it's the equalizer. And I think the reason why we're able to uh, attract people uh, and keep people coming back is because, you know, it makes music makes people feel great. And uh, and and I think that it's it's really the the jewel in the crown, you know, of what we have. And I think the events are, are just another way to bring that to life. Yeah. And uh, you, you hear the music and then you get to go out and see it. Um, but, you know, Phil, you're, you're you're on our short list. You're on our short list. Yeah, I appreciate that. Um, hey, hey, Danny. Who's, uh, what's the most exciting day you've had since you joined uh, iHeartMedia? Who have you met or what? Uh, just give us a snapshot before we turn it over to the question and answer. I would say on the fun side of the business, I would say when I went to our festival in Vegas, when I was a relatively new uh, senior vice president at the company, it was pretty amazing. It's two days. It's probably 15 to 20 artists. Um, you get to meet people, go backstage. It really brought the iHeartMedia master brand uh, to life. So I would say in the iHeart world, that was big for me because I always saw it and heard about it and I got to experience it. Of course, Cliff has been at least one time, maybe more, but that was, that was the creme de la creme. That was an amazing experience in Las Vegas. Yeah. Well, you know, Danny, I asked that question because, you know, a media company, obviously you guys like to have fun. I remember, like I said, hearing about Jingle Ball and it's been the radio and endless numbers of personalities that all just everything I associated with iHeart Media was all about the radio, but you guys are doing so much more. We just learned all about the data that you're using to help solve companies' problems, which is talent acquisition right now. And if anyone's listening and they want to get in touch with you, how do they do that? So, yeah, so Cliff Chiat is your guy. And, and I will say I love Jingle Ball. I love Vegas. I love all of our entertainment. But the business side of what we do is really, really important. And just to tie a bow on recruitment, people are working with us in five different ways. And it all starts with a consultation. It's either a new and growing market, like your Austin example earlier. It's general talent. It's specialized talent, maybe special engineers due to something that's being launched. Or it's urgent talent. You know, we've had hurricanes hit down in the south and call centers need to be up within four days. We filled those call centers with, with, with people to answer those phones to help those people. And then the fifth way really is a way of putting a bow around the whole thing is creating a true empo employment brand. So those are the general ways people work with us. We love to do consultations. We love to learn. And everything we do is driven by data. Vegas is awesome. Jingle Ball is awesome. But on the business side, we can help build people, pipelines, and corporations across America. So thank you. Yeah, so how best do they get in contact with you guys? That's easy. They call Cliff Chiat. And uh, Cliff, please give your information, but he will be the perfect contact to start this process. Thank you. Yeah, listen, uh, I'm, I'm around the NVTC quite a bit, um, but but uh, my information is uh, best to reach me by email, Cliff Chiat, C-H-I-E-T, at iHeartMedia.com. All right. Well, I learned a lot today, but before we go, let's talk about Did You Know? Did you know 80% of job seekers are passively looking yet currently employed? 4.4 Americans quit or changed jobs in 2022, according to a June report released by the Bureau of Labor Statistics, using their leverage in an economy where job openings still outnumber job seekers by close to two to one. When it comes to telling your recruitment story, iHeartMedia is America's number one audio company reaching nine out of 10 Americans every month. We hope you've enjoyed today's program and we look forward to seeing you at the next one. Visit nvtc.org for more information. We look forward to seeing you at next month's Let's Talk Tech with NVTC. In the meantime, follow us at Nova Tech Council on Twitter and LinkedIn. And remember to sign up for the latest tech news at nvtc.org. Mm -hmm.